to verify Joule's law. Uh, we're going to heat up some water in the calorimeter. Um, we're going to heat up the water for five minutes at a certain current. So we're going to start off with 0 0.5 amps for five minutes. Note the starting temperature and the end temperature. Um, so we're going to get some water there. We're going to use the same amount of water each time. The easiest way to measure water is to weigh it. So we've got 92.1 grams of water. So we need 92.1 grams each time we do it, okay? Um, give or take a couple of decimal places is, is fine. So we'll pop that into the calorimeter, put that back on, and we're just gonna give it 30 seconds to stabilize the temperature. Okay, so that seems to be steady. So that's your theta one is 22.8. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on the power supply, change the rheostat until I get half an amp. And I've got about half an amp there, and I'm going to leave this for five minutes. So we start the clock there for five minutes. Right, so we're coming up on five minutes, lads. So we're going to turn off the power and just let it rest for another 30 seconds to let the water stop heating up. Uh, it's gone up to 23.1 at the moment. So we'll just give it a uh, 30 seconds to settle. So we're at 23.2 degrees Celsius. That's our theta 2. Right, so what we do now is we're going to get rid of this water. We're going to change it out for fresh water back at our close to our original temperature. Again, we're going to weigh the water to get as close to 92.1 grams as we can. So we're gonna pop that back in. Again, we're gonna give it 30 seconds to settle down uh, for the temperature to stabilize, because we might have a slightly different uh, theta one, okay? It might be slightly different, but it needs to be as close as, as possible. So it is the exact same, actually, it's 22.8. So now we're gonna turn on the power supply, and now we're aiming for one amp on the current, okay? And we have one amp there, so we'll start the clock for five minutes. All right, so coming up on five minutes there again, I'm gonna turn off the power supply, and our final temperature is 24.2. Okay, so we're gonna go again. We're gonna do this another three times. Get rid of this water here. 92.1 grams of water. Okay, so back into the calorimeter. Put the lid on and we're gonna let this settle down. So again, we're hoping for it to be fairly close to 22.8. The more things you can keep stable, the better, okay? Um, so as close to the same starting temperature each time, the better. Okay, so starting temperature is 22.9 degrees this time. Power supply is going on. We're aiming for 1.5 amps here now. Okay, so that's five minutes on. The third one, we'll turn off the power supply. Uh, that was 1.5 amps. And our final temperature, 25.8 degrees. Uh, current was 2.0. And our end temperature is 28.1 degrees. Okay, so our theta one is 23.0 degrees. And the power is going on. And we're looking for 2.5 amps. Okay, and we'll start the time there now. Okay, so that's five minutes. We're gonna turn off the power then. And our end temperature for this one is 30.7 degrees. So that's an increase of 7.7 .7 degrees for 2.5 amps, lads. Thank you very much for your patience, and we'll see you next time. That round of applause is going in the video. <laughs> so the analysis of the results from the Joule's Law experiment, here is our table of uh, data. So the current here goes from 0 0.5 amps up to 2.5 amps. This column shows our initial temperature. This column shows our final temperature. 
This column is the important one, that's delta theta, the change in temperature. This one then we have I squared, that's the current squared. And then the last one, delta theta over I squared. So to uh, verify Joule's law, this column here, uh, in a perfect world, this would be constant, it would all be the exact same. Within the limits of experimental error though, um, these the difference here between 1.6 and 1.2 is just fine. So the fact that they are very close together verifies Joule's law, which is delta theta is proportional to I squared. You can also verify Joule's law by drawing the graph. So here we draw the graph of I squared against delta theta. And you can see that we've plotted in, in the points here. And the line of best fit is a straight line through the origin, which verifies that delta theta is proportional to I squared.